There's a brand new blur plugin for OBS and it is freaking awesome. You might remember that a few months ago, stream effects was hidden behind a paywall. I don't really want to get into the drama, I, I don't care. But stream effects was the go-to way to add a blur effect to your stream. And now that stream effects is unavailable, people have been looking for a new blur plugin. I know you can install free effects and whatever, but like, if you just want to add a blur filter to your stream, I don't want to have to install like 50 other things along with it. So let's talk about this new blur filter. It just came out last week and not only can you actually download it right now, but it offers way more functionality than the stream effects blur filter. And it's so much lighter on your GPU resources. Are you sick of being fisted by Microsoft and paying full price for Windows? Well, using this week's sponsor, VIP SCD Keys, you can get a Windows 10 Pro key for as little as $16. If you wanna actually get it for that price, you gotta use the code NUTTY at checkout to get 25% off. And then you can use any secure payment method like PayPal. They will instantly send you an activation key and you can shove that right into your Windows settings and then no more Windows activation watermark for you. Those keys can also be upgraded to Windows 11 for free, or if you just wanna get a Windows 11 key and install it like from scratch, they also have Windows 11 keys for $22. But again, you gotta use the code NUTTY at checkout to get it for that price. Anyway, thank you. I'm gonna go over there now and I'll, I'll show you how the blur filter works. Okay, so let's start. To get the plugin, head on over to the link down below. The plugin is called Composite Blur. Composite Blur. Co compos composite, composite blur. It's made by Finite Singularity, who is also working on another plugin that he hopes to release soon. So keep an eye on that name because he might be a big player in the whole OBS plugin space. Installation, pretty straightforward. Just click downloader. They do have an installer. And yes, this will work on Mac and Linux as well. After you've installed it, relaunch OBS and just go over to like whatever you want. Let's just choose my camera and go over to filters. And before I show you the composite blur filter, composite blur, I'm gonna actually go and add the old stream effects blur filter. I'm gonna set this to Gaussian blur. So look at OBS, just keep this in mind. It's using 24, roughly 24, 25% of my GPU. We're going to pump up the Gaussian blur filter to the max. Check out how much of my GPU it's using. So it boosted the GPU by like at least 5%, sometimes like five, 6%. That's quite a lot just for adding a simple blur filter. Now we're gonna remove this and we're gonna add the composite blur filter. If you don't see this option, then you installed the plugin wrong. So that's not my fault. That's you, you gotta figure that out. Anyway, so I'll add this and we see all these different options here. Now let's just switch this. Actually, we'll leave it on Gaussian first and we'll pump this all the way up. And let's just check out the GPU usage real quick. So this one, it's the same algorithm. So it's gonna add uh, like roughly the same GPU usage. However, there is a new algorithm that is only available for this particular plugin. It's not available with stream effects. Dual Kawase. I don't know how you say it. If you add this and you can see this, this algorithm is very smooth, but more importantly, if we pump this all the way up and then check the GPU usage, it's still around like 24, 25%. So like to my testing, this has very little GPU impact, which got you know that got me rock hard speaking of algorithms it also adds a little pixelate option so if you select this you can you can add like a mosaic blur kind of filter if you want to make your video look like one of those uh adult films let's say yeah you you know what i mean and the pixelate type has different options too so you can set it to be hexagonal you can set this to be circular so this, this is a pretty cool effect. Uh, and then also triangular, if you want to look uh, like the Zelda thing, Tri Triforce. I don't know, that had very little to do with Zelda, 
I just saw triangles and I thought Zelda, but yeah. You can also blur just a portion of the screen. So if you're playing a game like Jackbox that has a code that you want to hide from your viewers, you can hide just that portion of the screen and not the whole screen. So we'll add the composite blur again, and that's going to blur the entire source. Then we can add an effect mask, and we're going to set this to crop. And then we can just crop this in and cover just the portion of the screen that has the code. And we can also add a little bit of a corner radius to make it look better, and also some feathering to soften the edges. And uh, this is also going to work for the other type of blur algorithm. So even the pixelate one, uh, if you want, we can just pop this up a bit and we can have a different type of blurring effect. They have different shapes you can use too. So if you want to make like a circular mask, you can you can do that to adjust the radius and position wherever you want. But if you want to be like really precise with the position of the screen that's blurred like this, this shape here is like a it's like a rhombus shape. Is that, is that the shape? I don't know. I'm like not five. I don't learn shapes anymore. You can create your own mask. In fact, that is exactly what I'm going to do. So I'm just going to use Affinity Designer and I'm going to draw a shape right around the portion of the screen that I want to be blurred out. Give that some fill and then we will delete the background. Export this as a PNG file. Set the effect mask to image. And then for the image file, we'll just search for that mask that we created. And now only that portion of the screen is blurred out. We could also invert any mask if we want to blur everything else except for what is in that portion of the screen. There's also an option that says background source for compositing. Now this one's a little bit confusing, but let's just say I am on uh, planet Mars, okay? So here I am on Mars, and for some reason I want to add a blur filter to my body, okay? So we'll go to my body and we'll add a composite blur. But you'll see it adds this kind of black halo around me, and that's because uh, science, okay? I can't explain it, okay? But if you uh, actually set the background to be that Mars background, so we have a source here that says Mars. If we set the background source to Mars, it fixes and gets rid of that black halo. So if I remove that, see what that looks like? I have that black shadow effect. But if we put in Mars, it fixes that and it mixes in the correct colors for the source behind me. We're gonna move into the more advanced stuff you can do with this plugin. So if you combine the composite blur plugin with Exeldro's move transition plugin, you can do some really cool animations and effects. You can see right now, if I wanna turn on and off that blur filter, it's either on or it's off. And it, it's a really abrupt change. But what if I wanted to start in focus, but slowly animate that blur filter so I'm out of focus? And you can actually achieve that effect using the Move Transition plugin that we've talked a lot about on this channel. So make sure you have the Move plugin installed. I've just gone ahead and I've added a Move Value filter. And basically what this filter does is by simply turning the filter on, you can animate any slider on any filter on any source. So to give you an example, we're going to set the filter to composite blur because this is the filter that we want to animate and we want to set it to single setting. What setting do we want to animate? The blur radius. So this slider here, this is what we want to animate. So we're going to turn on the blur and I'm just going to set it to one for now. Then for this move value filter, I'm going to set the blur radius to 100. And then also I'm going to set the duration, custom duration. We're going to set this to three seconds. So over the course of three seconds, it's going to go from a blur value of one and go all the way up to hundred and just animate that. So now if I just turn this filter on, just turn it on you can see it slowly becomes clear. And then if we want, we can just make a duplicate of this. And this time we're going to set it to one. So now if we, activate the second filter. It's going to go from being blurry and turn clear again. And this works for the pixelate algorithm too. So if I if I use the pixelate algorithm, we can we can animate this pixel size slider. I'm just going to change the 
single setting, we're gonna set this to pixel size and we're gonna set it to uh, 50. And then the second one, pixel size, we're gonna set this to one. So now if we activate the second one, activate the first one, you can also chain these two moves together. So after we've run the first animation, we can make it automatically move over to that second animation. All we have to do is go to that first one and say, after it's done, next move, we want to go to move value two. And I'm also going to shorten these durations so that once we activate the first filter, we get this kind of effect. That's kind of fast, let me... Let me change the values here. We have we have this kind of effect here. I've used this effect to create a channel point reward that I like to call my poison me reward, where my viewers can activate a channel point reward to like attack me and it uses like that slash sound from Chrono Trigger. Isn't, do you like this poison sound effect better than the old one? I also do this kind of effect with my make me a TikTok channel point redeem where a phone pops up from the bottom and then as the phone moves closer to the camera, the background behind the phone goes out of focus, which I think is a super cool touch. Like it's, oh, I'm so excited. So yeah, that is the new composite blur filter. Guys, I know that last section on the animated stuff with move transition, I, I did go through that pretty quickly. So if you'd like me to make a uh, longer portion talking about move transition, maybe perhaps a move transition mega guide. I'm probably already gonna make that regardless of what you guys say. So uh, just tell me in the comments if you want me to make that, uh, even though I'm probably gonna make it anyway. Anyway, thanks guys. I'll see you guys next week um, or this week. Yeah, this week. There's gonna be another video this week. Thanks guys, see you later, bye.